Right, if you always wanted to do that hardtail rear end on your swing arm chopper, this is the DIY video for it. In this video, I'll be completely disassembling a bike, chopping the ass off it, bending up this rear end from scratch, and welding it all on step by step, showing you how to do it. So, let's get to it, let's rip this bike apart. Okay, so here we got <coughs> Freddy's frame uh, just in my little jig that I've made. Um, so I sort of want to cut this up in a way that sort of encapsulates this rear section and then I could weld it back on to this frame or another frame in the future. Being a one year sort of frame, it's probably only a few months to be honest. Um, these things probably will be sought after in the future. Obviously not now because everyone wants to cut this off and put a hardtail on it. So I'm basically going to cut this off somewhere where I can leave all the original like plates and castings and all that sort of crap alone. So yeah, this is like all the original like plate and casting and this is the underslung suspension that they talk about with a soft tail. You can see these two huge <laughs> laser cut plates here that look absolutely hideous but this is how you know this is the very first one so and what makes this so annoying is all the bolts like have a look how much room you've got for this this kicker bolt here it's at, like that's the kicking um support for the gearbox like look how much room you've got in there it's absolutely shit house so I want to keep all this and like all these mounts and everything so I think I'm going to cut this I want to cut it in a place that I can put a bung in there. So I can put a bit of, I'm gonna machine a bit of steel and put it inside and knock it in. And then, so I can push the new one on the outside. So I'll probably cut it through here on both sides and then cut it up through here, cut this support out so all this stays the same. So when it comes to it, I can literally cut another frame in the same spot and butt it into it and weld it back on like it never left. Be that whole rear section will come off in one piece and I can leave that to the side and then in the next fucking five years when all these hipsters hate their hardtails, I've kept, I've got a little mound of rear sections over there, sprung rear sections. But they're gonna pay me to weld these things back on so I can't wait. So I'm gonna go ahead and start cutting this up, removing this and then once that's removed, I'm going to put the engine in here and work out how much room I've got at the back of the head and how much room I've got at the, the rear section of the head here. Too worried about it moving a little bit because I'll straight back up and I'll weld the thing together. There it is. 
All right, I got it on its side. This was an absolute pain to get off because you can't get a grinder or nothing in there. So I'd use the old humble cold chisel, but it's pretty well there now. Right, so hopefully there's a couple of knocks with this, I'll get it going. Oh, you fucking blower. Come on, bro. I think me fucking, it has. Motherfucker. There it is. So, here's the front section. Put that back up there. So there's the front section. Here's the rear section. All in one piece, look at that. So, I'll just have to clean this up a bit now and that'll be ready to go straight back on another frame. This, I just cut everything to match. I'll put my shocks back in here. And that's fucking that. I'll get me shocks, eh? So, here's the shocks, they just live in there. So, that's ready to go back on another frame. All right, so I have the front section of the frame set up in my jig table here. Um, this is just a jig table I made by myself. Um, it's really quite simple. Um, on my web store that I'm gonna be bringing out, I'm gonna design and uh, make something like a little jig table so someone at home could have a little cheap jig table and do something like this themselves. Um, basically, we're gonna make the rear section of this frame now. Um, I've probably taken out a bit more than what you usually would if you were just gonna do a uh, like a rigid rear end on your swing arm shovel. Just because I wanted to keep this bit all original with the cutoff piece so I could attach it back to something and it basically looks original. So what I'm gonna do to achieve that, before I do any of this rear section, I'm gonna do this little T here. So I've gotta do connect this little bit again. And how I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna get the engine and I'm gonna put it back in here so that I know what clearances the engine needs. And then I'm gonna make, I'm gonna machine some little sleeves that go in here and in here. And then I'm gonna cut some pipe and I'm gonna fill it it so it goes together and we'll tack all this together before we get started on the rear section. So I'll go ahead, I'll put the engine in this and I'll start making some slip-ins and then we'll have a look at making this piece. All right, as you can see, I've got the motor in here. Um, something I did before I put the motor in, I prepped these two tubes for welding. So I basically just took all the paint off them and I just gave the inside a little hit with a file to make sure there was no burrs or nothing in there. And I put a weld prep on it. So I just put a little chamfer on the end of it so that I got somewhere to put weld. So I made these two little guys. They are the plugs that'll go in it. So they are just like two inches long or 50 mil long and I sort of want about an inch in each side. So that'll do perfectly. I had to put a little shoulder on it because the pipe I'm putting in there is a little bit different ID than the pipe that's already in the frame. So I made this a pretty good fit, right? So I made this a good fit so that I can just hammer it in there like this. So the reason I made it such a good fit is that it lines up the slug inside the pipe then. So it's dead straight with the pipe. But for this top tube, I want to be able to move the top tube a little bit. Just because if I was to go straight out, there would be a huge gap underneath the rear cylinder head. Which I think looks like shit, the tighter the better. So I have machined one side of this a bit loose so that I can have a bit of play on it so that I can hit this in and then I can play with the, the angle of this tube and make it a bit closer to the head so it looks a bit better. So originally I was going to get rid of this little weird hoop it's got in here. This is what they do with Evo engines to fit the rear head because the head's taller than a shovel. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to hammer these in both here and here and then I'm going to weld around them so that the slug is permanently in the pipe. And then when I slide this over, the pipe will sit on the shoulder of the weld and then I can weld around that and it'll be perfect. 
So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna weld these in, and then I'll get to what shoe I'm gonna use, and we'll do this piece. All right. Alright, so as you just saw, I welded my two bungs into the frame and what you also probably noticed is I sectioned this backbone a little bit. I wanted some more bend in it. So all I did was I put a 1mm cutting wheel through it four times, not the whole way through, just most of the way up so it's easy to bend. So I put that through and then all you do before you bend it, you get a normal grinding wheel and you just run over the top of it lightly and that'll give you a weld prep on both sides of the cut. And then when you bend it down like I have and tacked it, you'll have a well prep around the whole lot. So that's the reason why I did it like that. Um, it wasn't close enough down here in the bottom of the head. And the reason I want it closer, I'll see if I can mock this up. The reason I want it closer, that's sort of how I want it. If this is too high, this top of this upper pipe that comes off the rear axle plates is gonna look super weird. This needs to be almost dead straight, like it needs to be sort of one line through the whole lot. If this goes up and like that, or like this comes into the frame on a wild angle, it just doesn't look right, it looks like shit. So that is why I wanted to lower this rear pipe, of this rear backbone a bit, closer to the head, and it looks way better like that. So the next step on this will be cutting, so on a normal frame, the Back, the top bit that comes up goes all the way through and then this backbone all gets scalloped out and welded into that. So for that reason we'll start with this one. So I'm going to put that in there and then I'm going to measure this bit here and then I'm going to cut a piece longer and then I'm going to do the, the notch to go around this pipe and then I'll cut it to length. So I'll just be able to cut it a bit shorter and shorter until it's the length that I want. So I'll go through, I'll show you how I'm going to scallop that. I've got a special little tool and then we'll start tacking this crap together. All right, so having a little piece cut, this is the guy that's gonna live in here. So it'll live there, and like I said, I'm gonna sculpt that out, and we'll look at that, and then that guy will go there. So before we get too carried away, the size I'm using, so these large backbones are usually about the inch and a half mark. Now that material is pretty easy to get in Australia, probably the same in the US, wherever you're from. I'm sure you could probably get something around that the same size and that's fine. Um, you wanna go, what sort of wall thickness am I working with here? So I'm working with about three and a half mil wall. Now that's probably overkill. Um, this is a 4142, doesn't need to be that. It can just be a bright, semi-bright or something like that. Mild steel will be fine. I wouldn't go any smaller than like 2 mil or something, that's probably your limit. Anything smaller than that, you're probably going to bend it. So I've just got an inch and a half backbone here piece that I'm going to use. So the way I'm going to cut my little scallop so that it fits nicely under this pipe is with my little tool here. So what this does, this holds the pipe at your desired angle and then this little hole saw comes down and cuts it the same as this pipe so it slots in nicely. So I'll set this up and I'll show you. All right, so this is my little scallop tool. I've just put it in the vise here to make it easier to show you. Sometimes you can lay these things flat and they work even better, but just for viewing purposes, I'll do it like this. So basically, this is the vise that'll hold your piece in there and this is just a hole saw on a few bearings and then you put your normal drill up here and then that's what cuts your scallop. Now this thing will do a few different angles as well. You can change the angle of the vise like this and that will change what angle it's going to cut on. Now what we want to cut is not exactly 90 but it's pretty close. So I'm just going to guess and go maybe a few degrees under 90 and that should be sweet. 
So basically, you just want to use the size hole saw as the job that you're trying to piece into. Unless you're doing a weird compound, but let's not get into that. So basically, that's that. I have a little mark on here where I want the, the, chamf the uh, scallop to finish. It's usually the easy way to do it. So I set that up like that. Tighten my little clamp up like that. Make sure that's all tight. And then you basically, you want to do this nice and slow because it's quite a large cutter. And always a little bit of oil. So I just usually use like a bit of in inox. Oil is just for longevity. You don't need it, but your tool is going to last longer if you use it. A little bit more when you start smoke heaps. So there you have it, that's the scallop. So you never want to cut a whole, like a whole fucking tool there. You just want to cut half of it. It's a bit too hard on the tool and it takes forever. So that's what I mean by a scallop. As it cuts it out like that and then it will piece back into the job. So let's go back over the job and see how this fits after a little linish. Alright, so let's see how I did with my little guy here. Remember I cut it at a few degrees under 90, so make sure you got it around the right way. That guy lives there like that, and that guy like that. So the beauty of doing it this way is I can move this as much as I want like this, and then I just tack it here where I want it, and then a few more runs around that when I weld it up, and she will be mint. So don't beat yourself up too much if your gap here isn't perfect, because at the end of the day, you're welding it up with you know with a MIG, you could probably fill 10 mil with a mitt with its TIG like I'm doing. It's only a few mil, so don't beat yourself up if it's not perfect. It'll be good enough. So I'll just time lapse this. I'm going to set this up with a few magnets. Is usually the easy way to do it. I'm going to set this up with a few magnets, a little stop in between the engine here, so I have my desired fit. And then I'll weld it up and we'll come back when I'm ready to cut this off, I reckon. So let's do it. Alright, just thought I'd take a moment out of the time lapse just to show you how this all went. As you can see, that notch is super nice through there. That turned out really good. I gave it a few mil clearance on the back of the head. I gave it a little bit more on the top so we could get all this rocker box and stuff off if we need to. So that is all that I gave it for a well prep there. That's heaps after I weld that the whole way around and then linish it flat, you won't even notice. These are little notches I took out to give it that more bend. So as you can see, I well prepped all them so we can weld them up and, and file them flat, you'll never know. Um, down here, same thing, that's all I gave it for a well prep and that's heaps. So as I said, I'm gonna go through and weld this whole lot out now and then we'll chop this angle off last, the last thing we'll do after we weld all this around. All right, so I have welded out all this backbone now. So as you can see, welded around that, all my slits, my two connections, they're all welded out. So I'm gonna go through now and time lapse me cutting this off and then I'm gonna blend this and this and this so you can't see it anymore. And then we will get onto doing the axle plates and all that sort of stuff.
All right, so now that the hoop at the front is all sorted, we want to get on to the back and start putting the axle plates on this thing. Now, the axle plates for this thing are a little bit special because these are a lot more bang for your buck than your average cast axle plate like you would see on an original frame. These are just laser cut pieces that are exactly the same profile as an original piece. They are just laser cut out of plate steel. So the beauty of doing it like this is these are very easy to get cut anywhere. They are very inexpensive and um, they are very easy to use. So I use these on pretty well all my little frames that I do just because it's so much cheaper and you can get away with building a frame for so much cheaper. Um, the web store that I've got coming out as well, I will be selling these things on the web store. Not sure exactly what it is in price now, but all you American players, it'll be super cheap because it's going to be in, in Australian dollars. So you guys exchange rate is killer. So these are probably going to be super cheap for you. So what I have on my little jig bench here, I have this little tower at the back, which is what these axle plates bolt to. So when you weld it together, nothing moves. So you could probably do this in a few different ways, but this is all just like a homemade table that you can do at home. So it doesn't have to be some expensive like CT Newman rig. It just has to be something that holds all your pieces still while you weld them so nothing can move. So I'm gonna go ahead, get these bolted up, get them leveled on my table, and then we'll come back and start marking out our bends and bending some tube. All right, so I have my axle plates here bolted to my little um, tower here, so they are pretty sweet. Um, just a few little tools <clears throat> that I use when I do frames like this. First one is a little digital level. These things are pretty inexpensive and they are super handy to have around. Like setting up these axle plates, I just put this guy on an angle that I know is the same on both axle plates. So I put him on there put him on there, same angle, I know they're right. All I had to do was measure up the table, make sure they're the same level, and they're exactly the same. So, next we wanna do is we're gonna start measuring up and bending some tube to do, the, I reckon we're gonna start with these bottom legs first. They're the easiest, this top section's a little more difficult because you've got a miter cut and then two bends, the compound, but we'll get to that, it's not too bad. So, this bottom tube. There's a few ways you can work out how to bend this, work out where you bend start, finish. You, there's a heap of ways you can do it. There's even apps that you can use that tell you where to do it, blah, blah, blah. But I do it a pretty simple way because I find it's easier to keep things simple, not messing with your brain. I'm super simple, so that's just the way I work. So before we get to where bend start, stop, etc., angles, all that crap, I'm gonna show you the bending rig that I use. Pretty inexpensive, but they're sort of a necessity to do something like this. So come over and have a look. All right, so this is my tidy little bending rig. Mind the car park in the background. This is an American made bending rig. So all you players in America probably get one of these pretty cheap, but I imported this thing. It is super heavy, it's super robust. Um, I'll never have to buy another one again for the rest of my life. So as long as you've got the dies and everything and you don't break anything, this thing is good for life. You don't have to buy anything for it. So the beauty of these benders is that it pulls your tube through a form. So this die and this die are exactly the right shape for the pipe that I'm using. So when it bends the pipe, it doesn't deform on the bend. So other style pipe benders that use two dies and a press to bend it, always, this bend always deforms, it is not the right shape anymore. So that's why this bender is so special. It always keeps the pipe shape, no matter what the radius. So this is the right radius die for Harley stuff. I actually made this die because it was super expensive to import from America, but if you're already there guys, you can buy this stuff super simple. So, when you are bending something like this for your frame, you want to always start with a datum point. So you want a point on the, on the rig that you can always put your pipe to, and then you know where it's going to bend from there. So on this rig, I'll just move this. This spot here, you can see oops, with the red, that is my datum. So what I do when I start bending a frame like this, 
I have this go stick. So I'll put this camera back up and I'll show you how to use this thing. All right, so this is just like a little gauge stick that I use. It's just some um, scrap steel that is too thin to use for a frame like this. So I just use it to work out bends like this. So as I said, when I made this bend, so this bend is pretty close to the one I want on the frame. When I made this, I marked the point that we were talking about, the datum point on the rig. I marked it on my bit of tube here. So that when I line it up like this, put it on there, I put it pretty close to where I want it. Always give yourself a little extra that you can cut off both sides. So obviously the frame finishes here and this is where I want to join it. So what you do, you just measure from where you want to join it up to your little mark that you know where it is in your, in your jig. And then you work out, yep, I need say 230 there. 230 plus whatever that is. So let's go like this. So what's that, 2 to there, 230 from there, so what's that, 230, so let's say 600-ish. So now I know that I'm going to cut my material, my straight material at 600 long, and then I will put it up beside this piece and mark where this is, and then I'll bend it. So I'll just quickly cut a bit, and then I'll mark this, and we'll come back and we'll go over there and bend it. here, um, always deburr the ends, just an easy way to stop you from cutting yourself. So we've got our material, we know where the bend's going to go, so basically all we want to do, what we want to do is we know it's 230 off this line back, that is where we want the bend to start, that's where we know the datum is in the jig. So we put this pipe up here, we want 230, don't we? Yep, so 230 there, get yourself your pen and you just mark that. So. We mark that and we know that we want the bend to go that direction. So the jig will hold the pipe and pull it through. So you gotta know which direction you want the bend to go. So obviously we want it to go up the back way where the bend is. So we, I just put a little arrow on there that shows me which direction to go, just so I don't mess it up when I get over there. So let's go over to the bender and we'll sort this thing out. All right, so I have my little pipe here, we have our mark. I know what direction it needs to go. So as I said, when this thing bends, it pulls the pipe through a form. So the bend goes one direction. It just doesn't bend in the middle of where your mark is. So on this machine, the pipe always follows the die. So you want to have your arrow pointing away from you because that's the way the bend will go. So we put this pipe in here, right? And we put it up to our little mark on the die where I said it would go and then we just put these few little bits on these are the bits that help it bend like that and then we want to just put a bit of weight on it like that so my bender here is on zero degrees now for these rear legs on these frames luckily I have a few original frames to copy but I also have a blueprint for a pan original Harley Davidson blueprint for a pan so I know this rear leg angle is about 31 degrees. So I'm gonna go ahead and bend this to about 31 degrees, and then we'll go over to the bench again and we'll see how it fits. So like I said, this is a ratchet jig, super easy to use. You just change ratchets like that, and then this slowly bends it. So we're just watching what angle we're up to. So that's 25 degrees. 30 degrees, and we just want to go a little bit past 30. So I'm going to go a little bit, maybe a little bit more. And you always want to take the pressure off the piece when you're looking at what angle it is. So you take the pressure off, knock it back on. So there you go. That's just a bit under 30. So we'll just go a little bit more like that. 
There you go. Now she's about 31, 32. So we'll take this thing out. Bend, mid, we'll take this out. Let's go see what it looks like. All right, so we have our little freshly bent tube here. Um, something I just wanted to chat about quickly, you're probably wondering why this frame is not flat on the bench, why I've got it lifted up a little bit on these little bits of tube. Now there's two reasons for that. One reason is that sometimes when you put an engine in these things, the, bat, the belly hangs a little bit lower than your tube and it'll hit the, hit the table and you won't be able to get it flat. And the other reason is all of the gussets and all the little bits and pieces under, that weld underneath the frame or weld onto the bottom of the tube. So when you put it flat on the bench, it's never going to be level. So these little movable bits of tube are so that you can put them in between where the gussets and stuff is and then you can bolt it down and it's perfectly level to the bench then. So this is our little tube that we just bent up. So now we can sit it on here. As I said, both sides have extra so we can cut it off where we want. So we just move this up here, put that in there like that. and. By the looks, we need a little bit more bend in it. So you see how it's just really not lining up at the top there? That is all right, that's part of the process. So if I put it in there, I've got a bit of a gap here. So it needs a little bit more of a bend. So I'm gonna go back over there and bend it quickly. All right, so I just gave this a bit more of a bend. Let's see what it looks like. We'll put that in there, put that flat. There you go, so they both are good now. They both touch, that's in the right spot. So now all we have to do is cut this to length. So I got that side pretty close, just because I've done this a couple times, you can put that side and work off that side back. So we want to mark this side now. So we will put a little mark on here where the original frame finishes. Obviously give yourself a little bit extra because when you cut it, it will go further in. So I'll go over and cut this. Alright, so after a little bit of fiddling, I had to take, I ended up having to take a little bit off this side, a little bit off that side, which is fine. As long as this is your end result, it doesn't really matter how you got there. So, obviously, this is our little tube, that's the bit that's going to go in. So, obviously, we're going to slug this in the frame side. Up the back here doesn't matter because we've got this thick plate to weld to, that's all sweet, but frame side, I want to put these little slugs in. So this is just some similar pipe that is just smaller, that is the, turns out to be pretty close to the right ID, the same as these pipe. So I just cut these little 50 mil, two inch bits, and they will live in here. So now that I've got this right and I want to put my slugs in, before I want to do that, let's weld prep both Let's weld prep this pipe so that when we weld it, there's heaps to weld and we can linish it flat and it's still going to be just as strong. So I'm going to go through and I'm going to weld prep this pipe. Well, I'll do both, but I'll weld prep this pipe and then we'll come back and put these slugs in and then we'll tack this in. this tube I've given it a nice weld prep so this is pretty well good to go in the frame now all I want to do is we'll put this in one side my little slug as you can see real nice fit that's exactly what you want you don't want them loose in there because there's not much point in having it if they're loose and then we'll slide it into the bottom like that and then we'll do the rotate and jam it in like that lost me little, little bits here, that's that. So that is basically one of the bottom tubes done. That's ready to tack in, so that is basically it. So I'm gonna go through and do the other side and then we're gonna come through and tack it and then start on the top. I'll give you a close up on this first so you can see what's going on. So 
I've got a nice little gap there for weld. You want to weld the three pieces together. So you want to weld this to the inner, to my little sleeve, and then you want to weld this one together as well. So as you can see, paint off both sides, ready to go. This one the same. Don't worry if you've got a little gap at the back here or whatever. Nice like that, that's mint, ready to weld. So I'm gonna go through, like I said, do the other side and then we'll get to tacking this. All right, so I have both my bottom tubes done now. I have them clamped down. This is just a little clamp with a bolt to the bench so that both are sitting level with this. Both will be held in position when I weld this together and both are exactly where they need to be. So the way we sort of work this out, we just get our, our little square there, put it up against the side, and then I have a center line, as you can see, drawn on my little bench here. And then we just center line, mark it to the center, make sure they're both perfectly center, and then that's in the right spot. Make sure both our pipes are center with our axle plates, so that's sweet as well. And that's pretty well it. Oh, make sure both our Things are the same, 26 degrees, 26 degrees, so both the right height, both the right angle, axle plates are sorted. These are bent up. As I said, I have nice big gaps here so that we can put heaps of weld in there. I want to join this bit to the slug and I want to join the slug to this bit. So I'm going to put heaps of weld there and I'm going to grind this back flush. So I want there to be heaps of weld left behind after I've ground it flush. So that's pretty well that. Another little cool pieces, couple little cool pieces that I'm starting to make are these. So these are another piece you'll find on my web store, and these are your gearbox supports like that. So they look factory. I can show you this. This is a repop frame, but it's the same shit. It's pretty close to factory. See those little guys there? That is them. So I make these now. They're going to be on my web store as well. So you'll be able to buy a full frame kit and you'll be able to make this with the right little bits. So that guy lived there. I just used that to check, so that's good. So now all we need to do is weld this out. Right, I know I said weld out, but I'm not gonna really weld any of this out till we've done this top piece and it's all pretty well finalized. So I'm just gonna go through and put a couple of good tacks on this. So if I bang and bonk anything in the future, it's not gonna move anything. So obviously I'm using a TIG to do this, I just, I love a TIG because it's not like a MIG where it's always spraying spatter, you're always getting burnt and shit. TIG's actually quite peaceful when you're underneath the helmet, so if you're doing this at home, you only have a MIG, that's fine. Just make sure you probably give it even more weld prep because MIG takes a while to get it in there. Make sure your tacks are super hot, hotter than what you would weld it out with, just so that they really get in there nice and deep like. With the TIG, I really let it, with these little butt joints, you really just let it burn a bit before you put any filler in. Make sure you have a, a, a puddle that, that has both, all three things in it. So a puddle that's got this side frame, it's got the slug, and it's got your new bit of frame in it. Then you add your filler on. And I buffed all the paint off my pipes just because they're TIG well and needs to be nice and clean. Otherwise it carries on a bit. But if you're in a MIG, just fucking send it. Doesn't really matter too much. So I'll try and well, give it a tack under here too. We just give these a couple more tacks and then that's it. And then we will get to doing these top pieces, which is a bit more complicated, but we'll get through it. 
All right, so this bottom section is pretty well done. We've got it all tacked out. She's pretty well where she needs to be. The only thing we're going to come through later and do is this rear gearbox mount. But let's do these top two tubes first, and then we'll worry about the gearbox stuff later. So I've already gone ahead and bent one of these up to make sure my little bend map was right. Now, once you start getting a few bends like this, I use what's called bend map. So I have, if you have a little bench like this, I just have marks on the bench so that I know where the bend lines are from. So I have a date for each bend. The unfortunate part about this is all of your benders are gonna have different date and points. So I can't just give you these measurements and you can bend one up. So unfortunately, all I can give you is the measurements from the center of the bend, which gets a bit difficult working out once you've got your own bender and you're trying to work out a date and point and stuff. So basically all you want to do there is when you order your material to make your frame, order some material that's the same OD but get super thin so it's just easy to use, super cheap and then you can bend up a few little pieces and then if you mess them up, doesn't matter, you can throw it away. And then once you've got your thin piece right, you transfer it onto your thick piece and bend your thick piece. So anyway. This one is pretty easy to bend. Um, I'm obviously lucky enough to have a couple frames that I can copy. So original frames that I can copy all these bends out and I can bend something like this and put it up against it. So I've bent this one. So we'll just go over to a frame and have a look how she fits. All right, so this here is like a repop knuckle frame. Um, I know it's close enough because I have an original here. So that's original flatty and this is a knuckle. So same shit. So this thing is close enough. So all I did was put that guy on there. And as you can see, that follows nicely. So I might as well go through and show you how to make this now. All right, so we wanna go through and make this piece, right? So as I said, I already made this one. I already know it fits here nicely like that. So a few things to take into consideration when you're building your own frame like this. Uh, firstly, it's not going to be original, so there's no problem with changing a few little bits and pieces to make it how you like it, to make it fit some parts you've got better, blah, blah, blah. So with this front, this bike, I already had a seat that he bought. So now that I'm making this frame, I can make this seat fit, the, the frame fit the seat as nice as I want. So I've bent that and put the seat on there, and it fits the outline of the seat fits nicely with this. So there's no problem with, if you've got a seat like that, just making your frame super seat. It'll look way better than having a seat overhanging your frame or whatever. So this is pretty close to the knuckle frame anyway. That seat is obviously for a Harley, so it'll be pretty close anyway, so it doesn't really matter. So if you don't have a frame to copy like I do, all you do at a time like this is Get your tape measure and you just measure roughly what you think the length of the piece is going to be. So I'm guessing, let's say 750 millimeters. So like I said, you always want to give yourself a bit of room each side so you can chop it off. You know, it's going to be annoying if you've bent your piece up, the bends are perfect, but it's like 50 mil too short on this side. So I'm going to go through, we'll cut the bit at 750 and then I'll come back and show you where we're going to put these bends. So this is my 750 mil piece and this is my little bend map on the bench I was talking about. So all I do, you just line the pipe up with the end of the bench like that and then the mark at the end is my cut line so I know that's how long the piece has to be and then I have my marked bend locations. So also have direction of the bend, so that's the arrow, when the bend needs to happen, so this needs to happen first and then this one second. So they're both that direction, they both happen at a certain time. If you've got compound bends that have to bend into each other, you need to do them in an order and a direction. That's why I always put a direction and a number on them. So, as I said, it's a bit difficult to tell you where to bend them because my bender has a specific datum, but I know that 
from this mark to the center of the bend is 30 mil. So I could show you this and you could work it out. So my first mark is 80, so 30 mil plus that will be center of the bend. And the second mark is about 440 mil, so 30 mil plus that is the center of the bend. And then at the end is just 750 mil. So you should be able to get all you need off that to make this at home. So let's put it in the bender over there and then I will tell you what the angles of the bends are. All right, so as we said, Number one's got to go first and make sure your direction is right. So we'll put this in here. I want it to bend that direction. I know the pipe is going to get pulled through the die in this direction. So that is all sweet. Where's my little... That's the one. Put him in there. So then we just tighten this up. Make sure it's in the right spot, which it is. So this is the bend that the seat will be on. So that's the bend at the top and then it goes into your center tube. So that's about 22 degrees. So I watch it on my little dial here and look for 22 degrees. Just a wee bit more. There's no harm once you've done, once you've got two pieces, there's no harm getting your other piece and whacking it in there and just making sure it looks pretty well right. So that looks pretty good. So now we spin it around and we do the small piece. So we spin it around this way and we want the bend to go that way. So we want it this way. So when you're doing two bends like this, you've got to make sure that they're both level. So you've got to look down the pipe and make sure the first bend is level to your die. Otherwise when you bend it, they're going to be on the piss and cockeyed. So the way you do that, you just set him up, put him in the right spot, put him where you want him like that, and then you just come around to this side and you look down it and then you just give it a turn. Oh, not that much. So you just give it a turn about there. Looks pretty sweet. Now this is just the little, this bend is just the little kick that it's got when it comes out of the axle plate to just to make it a bit narrower. So this bend is like not much at all. It's like three degrees. So this is only gonna be a little guy. It'll just be one of my little things here, so... Just like that. Alright, so there we have it. That is the bent piece. So let's go over the bench and see how we did. So a good little indication to see how close your bends are. Put them together like this, and then as you can see, there's no gap between them. So that shows us that we've got the bends in exactly the right spot, and they're exactly the same angle. So let's put these on the frame and then work out this little mitre that I've got here. All right, so now that we have our pieces bent, the next thing to work out is where the mitre is gonna end up on the top of your pipe to made up with this center tube. So it's something that you need to do that is a line where it needs to finish. So right here, I have a line and that's where the end of the mitre needs to finish. So that's what it is on like a standard frame. So I'll just like to make it the same. So just for reference, that's about four, 480 millimeters from your neck. So 480 millimeters from your neck back to here, I've made a mark. And that's where I want the point on my mitre here to finish. So if I have a mark there, I know that both of them are gonna finish in the same spot. And then when you weld it up and look down on it, because it's a chopper, you'll probably see it because there's only gonna be a tiny little tank and a little seat there. So you want it to both finish at the same point, nice welds there, and it'll look schmick. So, what we want to do to achieve that, 
we want to get our pipe here, and all I do is sit it on top. I'll move this one, maybe you can see better. So I just sit this pipe on top, whereabouts it's going to live. So I know that I'm going to line it up with the back of the axle plate here, and then I'm going to look on the outside of it, and then I'm going to put a mark where I want my cut to be. Now, as always, it, you want to give yourself a little bit extra so you've got something to cut off if it's a bit long or short. So I'm going to mark that there, across here, and down there like that. And then I'll show you how I'm going to cut this thing. And then we're going to try it on there and make sure it works. Alright, so I just got my little tube here. I've just got it clamped down to the bench and I'm going to use my trusty old hand grinder with a cutoff wheel to cut this angle. Now you could definitely do it in the drop saw. I've done it before, but I've had a few times where it was a bit skew and then you have a big gap on the top or bottom. By clamping it down to a bench like this, I know that this cut is going to be square to my two bends. So that's why I do it like this and it comes out fine. And as we said, we leave a little bit extra so we can fix it up in the linen shirt and make it fit real nice. There we have it. I'm just going to clean this up and then we'll see how it looks. Alright, so we have my two pieces here and they are both perfectly the same and you're probably thinking at home, why didn't I just mark the second piece off the first piece? Which is kind of what I did, but you need to use this method to get your first cut before you can copy it for the second cut. So they're both exactly the same, let's put them in and see what we are working with. Look at this. And they are both come out nice. Not much gap in there, nothing. So I'll get the camera and I'll come and show you. All right, so as you can see, nice and symmetrical there. That looks good. Um, if we have a look up here, there's my little line. They are both pretty well the same length. Now, if you were to have one a lot longer, you can always take a bit off down here and that will change your length up here. But the other thing, because we just cut a straight cut on and it's going onto a, a round center section like this, you do have a gap top and bottom. Now that is actually an advantage because that's going to work as a weld prep. So when I tack this on, I'm going to tack it so it has the same gap top and bottom and then I'll fill that thing completely with weld and it will be rock solid. So I'm going to go through, I'm going to take the paint off here where I'm going to have little pieces and then we'll come along and we'll tack this stuff in. All right, so pretty well the same as tacking up this bottom section. I want to tack it up nice and firm, but with these top pieces, because you can rotate them and get a bit of height difference like that, I want to just tack it on the tops of both ends, and then I can sort of twist them and make them both level. So if you just focus on the tops here, you should be right to bend it around and make it exactly how you want it. So that's the back done, and then I'll just give the top piece just, I'm just fusing this because I don't want it heap strong yet, because like I said, I might want to move it a little bit. Alright, so I'm probably going to get in your way now, because I need to do this side, but you'll live. Just trying to get both pipe the same height is sort of the hard part. And as always, make sure that the pipe is in the middle of this. All right, so now we just have a good look at it. See what she looks like. So this one can come down a little bit. It's all right, because I haven't tacked that yet. So I want to come down a little bit with that, somewhere there. Alright, 
That looks pretty good. Yep, yeah, sweet. So I'm going to go through, I'm just going to do a couple measurements, make sure this is sweet. I've got just a big square here. This is probably what I'll do my measuring with. This is just a big like carpenter square. And you can just put this off your bench. You do a couple measurements here and there, make sure both sides are the same. And then I'm going to put a few more tacks on this. And then we will get going on a few next pieces. Not exactly sure what I'll do next, but we'll find out. Right, so as you can see, I have this all tacked up now, so pretty well the only thing left to do with these two top tubes is put our joining piece in here that mounts your rear guard and your oil bag and stuff. But once again, because this is a custom frame, we can do whatever we want, so the easy way that I've found is we'll put the rear wheel on and then we'll put the rear guard on, space it and everything, and then you just put this tube in wherever it makes it super easy to mount the rear guard. So that makes that way easier. So we'll leave that alone. I reckon we'll do this rear gearbox mount, or as you Americans call it, a tranny. Um, tranny means something completely different in Australia, so we call them a gearbox. So let's get on to doing this rear gearbox mount. So as I said, I have a few little bits and pieces that will be on my web store when I launch it, hopefully at the end of this year, the start of next year. Um, these bits make doing this rear gearbox mount super easy and makes it look pretty well stock. Hard to tell the difference if you do it properly. So I'll get this camera in closer and we'll have a close up of what I'm going to do in here. Alright, so because we still have the front section of our frame, we have the front gearbox mount still. So we can just use that as a reference. Now when you build these frames from scratch, it's a little bit harder to work out where this needs to be because there's nothing there. So I've got a jig that sits in the motor position and then comes around and positions the gearbox. But as I said, we don't need to do that. So we can just use our regular gearbox plate to position the rear mounts. So just because we're on TV, I can do this. And the tranny plate's bolted on. So now that the tranny plate is bolted on, these are another little piece that I will be selling on my web store. So these are just a little um, bit of stock that just has a threaded hole in it. And that is the guy that bolts up underneath here like that. But before we put him in, we've got to put our pressed plates in. So these plates are basically an exact copy of Harley plates. So one goes underneath like that, and one goes on top. So what we want to do, we want to put that in there. Oh no, Let's put the, that in there, good fit. And then we have our bolts that go through here like this. So we bolt that up. Bolt this one up. So tighten them up. Tighten both up. Obviously these won't be Allen key, it's just some stock that I got laying around. And then the bottom one goes up. Move this back a little bit. Or out on the two. And the bottom one goes up underneath and goes like that. So that is pretty well a stock looking rear engine mount, rear gearbox mount, and super easy to do, like that's it, done. All I gotta do is weld this up. And then another cool little piece I've got, this is the rear guard mount that goes between these two at the back here, on, up through here like that. So once I've tacked these pieces in, I'm gonna put this guy on. So I'm gonna go through, I'm gonna tack this, and then we'll come have a look at this rear gear, this rear guard mount, I reckon. Alright, so that is pretty well my rear gearbox mount sorted out. The only thing left to do is put on the rear guard mount and this little stiffener plate. Now if I go back over to this frame and give you a look, I just unbolted the uh, tranny plate and you can see where this stuff goes. So that is the rear guard mount 
and this guy here is just a stiffener. So the gearbox is obviously what pushes this whole frame forward when you're riding. So it just connecting these together helps fucking put the force into the frame. So this is another piece, as I've probably said before, that I'll have on my web store. These two bits will be on the web store. So I'll go through and I'll whack them in. And then that's pretty much our whole rear um, section finished. All right, so I've just trimmed this up to make it fit in here nicely. So it basically goes one of these ways like this. Basically lives there like that. Lines up with the center of this down tube. So that's pretty sweet. That all seems pretty good. Now I'm just gonna tack it in. When it wants to go into the right spot, there it is. So tack this bitch in. Make sure it's centered at the back here, which it looks pretty good. How square does it look? Looks pretty square. That'll freaking do. Another tack in here. Alright, so that's pretty well that. Now, I know I said I was gonna put this thing in, so that lives in there like that, but I'm thinking I might put the rear wheel on and I'll put the rear guard on so I can make sure this is in exactly the right spot so you don't have like a heap of spaces there and it'll look ugly. So I reckon what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take this engine out and then I'm gonna start welding this rear section up. That's pretty well all I have to do. I might just tack a little something between the two top tubes just to make sure they don't move when I weld this bit. But that's pretty well it. That's pretty well the whole rear section done. So I'm gonna to get to welding this thing out and I'm just gonna montage it so you can watch. All right, so that is most of this frame welded out. I don't want to go too crazy on it just because I've got a lot of other little bits and pieces that I need to tack on this and mount and do this and that. And then I can come through and weld them out when I do final weld out on this thing. So that'll pretty much conclude this episode. Um, as I said, this is just a low buck way of doing a hardtail on your swing arm. This can be a lot cheaper than other methods because in this circumstance, this was like a weird one year bike and you can buy a hardtail from America, whatever, a V-twin hardtail, and it won't fit this. You'll have to modify it anyway. So this is just an easy low buck way to do it. Um, obviously I used a lot of my own parts that I make to build this frame, but you can just as easily substitute them for something else. Like this gearbox cross member, you can just use a bit of box. You know, you can just use plate to do this and that. You can make your own. It's really a chopper, so chop the thing up, do whatever you want, have fun with it. So that's it for this episode. As I said, the next episode, I'll be putting the engine gearbox in. I'll be mounting the oil bag. I'll be mounting the rear guard. I'll be doing all those bits and pieces before final paint for this thing. And then I will be assembling it and running and ripping this thing. So thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you on the next episode.